Both the Union and the Confederation suffered horrible casualties during the American Civil War. And the reason is obvious. Generals failed to recognize that the new rifle muskets with nieboes were very accurate and long range. They wreaked havoc to the dense column formations that they insisted to deploy. Okay, this is the commonly accepted version, but are we sure that this is what happened? I am the Crow. Welcome to Millennium 7. Since their introduction, harquebuses, muskets and pistols fired balls, that is, spherical projectiles. The fact that an elongated shape is more aerodynamic than a ball was already known by practical observation. Just consider how narrow it is made. However, balls were in use because, with smoothbore barrels, an elongated projectile would soon lose its stability and it would tumble in the air, losing speed and veering off trajectory. The drawback, however, is that the ball has to be slightly smaller than the barrel diameter to load the weapon from the muzzle. This means that, upon firing, the ball bounces around a bit inside the barrel, and the last bounce before clearing the muzzle imparts a side nudge, making the ball drift sideways in an unpredictable way. And obviously this reduces the accuracy a lot. So, around 1820, Claude de Thiemignier in France had a brilliant idea. It was already known that rifling the inside of the barrel improves accuracy. Rifling actually forces the ball to rotate very fast, making it less sensitive to wind and generally more stable in the air. Also, the ball, to rotate, has to engage the grooves. This avoids bouncing, but actually creates a different issue. So, being usually made of lead, the standard ball was soft enough to be forced into the barrel with a good measure of solid as elbow grease. Um, the British also used to wrap the ball in a leather rag to simplify the loading sequence. But whatever the solution, loading a rifle musket was a slow and painful operation if compared to a smooth ball. Minier bypassed all the issues inventing a conical bullet that, upon firing, it expanded engaging the grooves. In this way, it achieved four benefits with a single solution. The bullet didn't need to be forced down the barrel anymore, it could be smaller than the actual caliber and it could be loaded easily. Uh, the bullet was elongated, so it had better aerodynamics than a sphere. Also, the bullet was stabilized by the rotation, being less sensitive to the wind action, and finally, and most critically, the bullet wasn't bouncing around in the barrel anymore, greatly increasing the accuracy. Rifle muskets firing minier balls were the weapons that civil war was fought with, being the large majority of the individual weapons distributed during the conflict. The two most common types were the Enfield Pattern 1853 and the Springfield Model 1861. Actually, there were no important differences between the Union and Confederacy weapons. But now the question is, was the increased accuracy of these weapons, if compared to the previous generation of flintlocks, the cause of the terrible casualties in the American Civil War? Well, the truth is, probably, that the casualties were not much higher than in Napoleonic times, and that the increased accuracy and practical range did not really translate in a substantial increase in effectiveness. I know that it sounds strange, but there are a few empirical facts that should make us question the commonly accepted version. The first element is, if we compare the battle loss rate of Napoleonic Wars with the Civil War, actually we don't see a large difference. Various analyses have shown similar numbers, if averaged, even on a limited number of battles. We can place the average battle loss percentage between 16% and 21% for both periods. A second element at odds with the commonly accepted version is the following. During the Napoleonic period, the first volley exchange between two infantry bodies 
happen at about 91 yards on average. During the Civil War, the distance increased to 141 yards. It is a big difference, but the rifle musket remained precise up to roughly 500 yards and they had aiming sights that could target at that distance. So, in this slide, the distance of the first volley in during the Civil War seems oddly short. A third element was that, during the war, both sides kept using large and deep formations of mass men for the attack. It is often said that the generals did not understand how lethal the fire of the rifle musket could be against these formations, and so they condemned their forces to the slaughterhouse. While I think it is quite unlikely that brilliant leaders like Lee and Grant did not recognize the problem and did not act on it. A more feasible explanation, in my view, is that the losses were not so high and they did not seem disproportionate to them, also considering that they often happen during the dangerous and bloody job of attacking a prepared defender. Now, if you still think that the common version, the high lethality, high loss version, is perfectly sound, then you can stop watching now and thanks for watching. But if you think, like me, that there is something else, well, please, keep watching. So, now the question is, how it is possible that the improved performance of rifle muskets firing minier balls did not translate into a greatly increased effectiveness on the battlefield? With the flintlock musket, it was practically impossible to hit a target beyond 50 meters. And I'm probably generous. The dispersion of bullets was simply too high. Actually, the musket had a ballistic range of about a thousand meters, but nobody really bothered. It was always used at short range because of this dispersion. At that distance, for any practical purpose, the ball trajectory was considered a straight line. Rifle muskets, being more precise, could be aimed at a longer distance target with some hope to hit it. Now, crucially, with the kind of muzzle speed provided by a rifle musket, the bullet, even a minier one, had to travel in a curved ballistic trajectory to reach the distance. In practice, the bullet followed a trajectory more like a cannonball than a rifle bullet. Both the Enfield and the Springfield came equipped with sights that let the soldier aim at a specific distance in 100 yards intervals. Now, the problem was that a 40 or 50 yards error in estimating the target distance with a curved trajectory might easily result in the bullet overflying the target or falling harmlessly in front of it. A soldier must be very well trained and sharp-sighted not to make an error of such magnitude. Actually, we have reports of soldiers not even adjusting the graduated sights because they were deemed too complex to be used in the heat of battle, or we also have reports of infantry fire overflying the targets, particularly in the earlier battles. And this is the reason why fire was usually withheld till the enemy was at relatively short distance, where the bullet trajectory could be considered almost flat, but in this way, almost all the advantage was lost. This is the reason why Civil War infantry fire wasn't much more effective than in the Napoleonic era. So, at the end of the day, these are the main points. The rifling and the better aerodynamic of the Minier ball increased the effective range if compared to flintlock muskets of the previous generation. However, aiming at the long distance was beyond the capacity of most soldiers, so it was hardly used. The effectiveness of infantry fire likewise increased, but definitely not enough to cause a tactical revolution. Mass formations were still used because they still made sense in the civil war conditions. Soldiers started to run more to minimize the time spent within the enemy fire area, but that was basically the only reaction. Generals were not dumb with sensitive batches, but they simply judged that the conditions did not require a drastic change. So, thank you for watching and good night.